It seems to me an unwise thing, kinsman, to stay by yourself up here on the heath, when you have this case on your hands with Sigurd Bynason and his kinsmen. It would be a great grief for Lightney if she were to lose you, and your sons are still so young. Liot sat with his head leaning against the wall. He answered, I don't reckon them so highly as to go well attended for their sake, and I know that my death will not come from them. I know one who wished me the worst of deaths, but I believe we shall meet before that, and then I care little what else may happen. What is this you talk of? asked Fedelida. But Liot made him no answer. After a while he spoke again. Maybe it were better for Lightney if she were left a widow while still young enough to console herself. Then you know little of her spirit, replied Fedelida. I do not believe she would take any husband after you. So highly does she honor those she loves. Liot sat in silence as before. Fedelida went on. You know well that you would not find such a wife as yours if you searched over all the world. That is true, answered Liot. But I love the black spots she had between her breasts more than all Lycne's beauty. I loved her more when she struck at my throat with her knife than I love Lycne when she puts her arms about my neck. I was less sorrowful as I rode over Dovre in wintry weather thinking of her curses than when I ride to Skomedal knowing that Lycne will meet me with kind words at our door. I would rather be hugged in the clutch of the white bear than think of Kare holding her in his embrace. To this Fedelida answered in great wrath, You have acted ill, kinsman, and worst of all when you did not speak of this before you were betrothed. Yes, said Liot, but then I thought I could put her out of my mind if I were once married. But now I see that badly as I treated her, it was even worse for myself. For now I must grieve, as long as I live, that I possessed the fair maid and lost her. <laughs>